detail about the um, the different challenges that you you still face when um, when you deal with APIs, how how best to monitor and, and secure them. Um, now we're going to be joined by Alan Glickenhaus uh, from uh, uh, from IBM. He's the API business strategist for for IBM, and Alan is going to talk to us about the principles of API security. Uh, welcome, Alan. Hi, John. Great to see you again. I, I think I only ever talked to you on this uh, hop-in platform. Yeah. I know. I'm looking Great forward to, to the day we can actually get out and, and, and go have a drink together. That would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. If you'd just like to uh, share your screen. Sure. Let me do that. Okay, let's pop that up. By that, that. How are we doing? Looks good. Uh, ready? To, are you going to put it into the presentation? Okay, great. We'll I'll leave you to it. All right, great. Thanks, John. So, uh, welcome everybody. I wish I were there with you in Paris. Uh, we're doing virtual everything nowadays. So, um, as John said, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I, I am the digital transformation and API business strategist for IBM. Uh, and today the topic is principles for API security, which uh, is an odd topic for a business strategist to be speaking about, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Um, so this is my standard opening. Uh, if you've seen me speak at other events before, I use this kind of a slide. I'm, I'm gonna say something a little different this time. Um, the, the content at the bottom is what I write about and the numbers are the number of things that I've written. Um, and uh, today, uh, we're going to actually just speak about one of the items that I've written about, uh, a white paper called Principles for API Security that I did earlier this year. Um, and the history of this is, just, I just want to take a minute to, to discuss, uh, being a, a business strategist, when my management said to me, we'd like you to write a, a, a paper on security, I said, you know, why are you asking me to do this? Why aren't you asking one of the you know hundreds or thousands of technical people that we have that focus on security to, to write a security white paper. And, and the answer is they, they were really looking for something a bit different. Um, and so uh, that's what today's topic is, is about. And what I do in, in dealing with uh, my businesses that I speak to all the time is, is translate from um, business things that the business is trying to accomplish into the technical things that, that we do in IT. To, uh, to enable that, and I do the opposite. I, I, I take uh, technical things and try to make them understandable by the business. And, and that's that's pretty much what this paper does. It's it, it's focusing on um, very technical topics of security and trying to raise it up to the, the principles, the goals, the, the why are you doing this questions, and, and what kinds of things are you trying to accomplish? Um, and and so, so that's what we'll talk about. Um, in, in the 20 to 25 minutes that I have, we're going to cover 30 principles that I've come up with in, in four different groupings. Um, so as you can do the math there, you realize that I need to do more than one per minute, which is, um, you know, even for somebody from the New York area uh, is a challenge to speak that fast. But I'm, I'm going to breeze through some of them quicker than others and, and hopefully focus on this. And we'll give you pointers to the white paper where you can get uh, more information at the end. And then probably the most important thing is how do you use this uh, when, when I'm done speaking? Uh, how do you put it into practice for yourself? So as I said, the, the principles become a, a way to, to think about um, um, you know, what you want to accomplish in the area of security for APIs. Uh, so, and, and, and the note at the bottom is important. Um, this is certainly not the only aspects of security that you need to focus on, but just to limit this to some kind of a consumable uh, amount of information. I focused only on API security. I'm not dealing with, you know, firewalls and 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 you know, all the author authorization stuff that that happens in the back end and all these other things. Um, it's really APIs. But APIs have become a, a big target for bad people um, and maybe sometimes um, not bad people who are just making mistakes uh, and, and may cause issues in in your environment. And if you think about security only from a technical perspective, you know, there's, there's an ongoing, um, um, you know, leapfrog kind of a thing where we create some kind of a technical implementation of, of some security, um, you know, aspect. 
and, and, and put it in place. And then the bad guys try to break through that. And, and then we do something to stop them from getting, you know, doing that. And, and it goes on and on. And we keep, you know, putting another layer in front of what we've done before. And, and it just keeps changing. It changes a lot and it's difficult. And, and very intelligent people, probably like yourselves, are, are fighting this battle all the time. And, and so, uh, in the paper, what I tried to do was raise that up a level. Instead of focusing on, you know, all the different technologies, uh, let's talk about, you know, something that's a little more stable. Like, what are the goals that we're trying to achieve? And, and then we can map, um, you know, did we achieve those goals? Like, so, so once we decide that a principle is something I want, how am I going to to implement that becomes the technology. So, without further ado, let me get into this. Um, so there are, uh, like I said, four different categories. And, and the first category that I'll speak about is strategic security principles. And, and you, these are very high level. Um, you know, so what is the main thing we're trying to do here? And the answer is we're trying to protect access to the data and transactions in our business, right? So, so only allow the appropriate audiences to access the things that they're allowed to do in the amounts that they're allowed to do them. Um, so, you know, obviously a very simple thing to get started. Um, one of the principles that I suggest is to use business APIs as a point of control. Um, you know, somebody might think, well, if APIs are an attack point in the enterprise, maybe I should not use APIs and, and, and then I can, you know, not have APIs be attacked. But, but APIs become a single point of control and, and uh, a, a way to you know, focus your security efforts in a particular area as opposed to spreading your efforts out all over the place to see if um, you know you can stop everybody from coming in in many different directions. Um, another strategic goal is to minimize potential exposure. Um, you know, only provide the allowable data and no more. Don't give them more than that. Don't expose internal structures, and and, and assume that somebody is going to get into your environment. And what is the worst situation, and, and determine the exposure for that, and, and how to minimize the uh, the potential exposure from from that. Uh, once something is happening, recognize it. Uh, recognize the abnormal situations and, and raise an alert and log all activity so you know what's going on and, and um, you know can take action on on the things that have happened. And the final of the security of the strategic area ones is to use multiple techniques for security. There is no single technology that's going to stop everything. Um, and recently, I was on another API Days event and somebody asked. Uh, a specific question about a specific security technology and said, you know, this has, you know, flaws in it, it just doesn't stop everything. And the answer is that's right. Um, um, you know, you, you, you need to use more than one. So um, like it says there, locking your car doesn't mean you throw the keys on the seat and, 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 and if they break through the window that they, they've got it, right? So you use multiple techniques, right? So, so those are the strategic ones, obviously um, very high level views as to what you want to accomplish. Um, the, the next set are basic security principles. So again, we're going to deal with some of the things that pretty much everybody does, um, or we hope everybody does, but maybe you're not doing some of these, but it's good to write them down. Um, and, and so, so, uh, these are things that you've certainly heard before. Um, and, and so know your APIs, um, all your APIs should be cataloged and governed. Uh, you don't want to have hidden APIs that nobody else knows about because, somebody else is going to find out about them and, and then you're not going to be uh, logging and, and, you know, alerting and, and, you know, seeing what happens if there's um, uh, somebody that's found these hidden APIs and, and is accessing through that. Um, don't expose APIs to people that shouldn't see them. Uh, you know, so, sometimes it's easy to just put all your APIs up there uh, in, in a portal and, 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 you know, anybody that comes sees them all, but they can only subscribe to certain ones of them. That, that's a bad practice. Um, you know, audiences should see only the things they're supposed to see. If, if you let an audience see that an API exists, but they don't have access to it, they might try to get access to it. And if they figure out how, they're now doing things that they're not allowed to do. Uh, know which applications are using an API. So obviously when, app, when a user or consumer subscribes to an API, we want to track and control that API's usage. It, but it may be a, a, a mistake that they do, which just invokes the API too many times because they've made a mistake in their coding, or maybe it's something that's uh, abusive uh, intentionally, but we want to uh, track and, and, and cut off uh, bad behaviors if it's happening, whether intentional or not. 
Uh, the next one, of course, we, you know, we sometimes need to know not only who, which application is using, but also who the user of the application is, right? So in, me on my mobile app, I'm allowed to access my bank account. Not everybody with the mobile app from my bank is allowed to access my bank account, right? So, so we need a, a mechanism to know who the application user is, not just the application itself. Um, we're not, and we don't want to recreate all the security that we have inside our business uh, again for APIs. We need to integrate with the existing identity and access management, not duplicate it, uh, not create a second version uh, that needs to be kept in sync. So, so um, you know, that's something that you want to focus on as well. Uh, control the level of API usage. So establishing rate limits is something that most of the um, you know off-the-shelf uh, vendor applications uh, in the API management space, like IBM's API Connect, do. Uh, so we establish rate limits um, and we alert you know or stop uh, if multiple attempts uh, um, happen uh, to exceed that. Um, you also want to ensure that the message uh, is um, kept safe as it uh, tr travels through the network and even when it's in uh, a, a steady position inside the enterprise, uh, ensure that the messages are not modified as they flow through the network. Uh, so encryption obviously is something that you would use there. And then uh, provide visibility, so monitor what's going on and log the API traffic and, and then finally um, allow anybody to um, to alert you to a potential exposure. So even if it's a consumer out there who finds something that might not be working, you might have a nice consumer that wants to let you know that there's something that uh, is exposing data that, that should not be exposed and, and, and allow for a process for reporting these potential exposures. Okay, so I think I've made good time uh, on the early stuff, which can give me a minute or two to to slow down and, and spend a little bit more time on, on the on the next ones, which are a little bit more uh, you know deeper than than the early ones that we spoke about. So, um, so this is a, I think an important one that that people don't always think about. Um, but but there's a challenge um, where we want to be sure that we secure uh, access and, and the traffic. Um, as it comes into the enterprise, this is in the case of external uh, APIs, uh, before uh, or even internal ones, uh, before we invoke the business logic. Um, we don't want to mix the, the security and, and the business logic together, because if we're doing that, um, a, a, a bad actor who is um, in gotten as far as the point where they're starting to be uh, validated for security, will already be in the place where the business logic exists and could potentially do something um, to you know, harm that business logic, take advantage of that business logic. So, so we want to complete the API security um, and, and finish that aspect before we move forward to the, to the business logic that's, uh, that's being invoked. And, and that leads to the next question, which is differentiating between integration logic and business logic. And sometimes this can be a little confusing or, or difficult, but Integration logic it may decide things like which application do I need to invoke to get an answer, uh, but it's not going to, to start doing calculations around um, you know, what, what the answer is to the query that you're trying to uh, accomplish. So, so uh, we do want flexibility in the API to be able to do various backend accesses to, to get things done, uh, but we don't want to start to push the business logic into the API itself. Um, execute security for external APIs in the demilitarized zone. So, so this goes back to number 15, which is, you know, traffic coming from the outside should complete security before being allowed into the trusted zone. There are some, um, you know, situations that I've seen where uh, an enterprise does a cursory security check in the DMZ um, and then completes the security check in the back end. If you've passed traffic, into the back end that is not fully authenticated and, 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 and validated, um, then now that they're in the back end, um, there's a possibility that they may use a runtime to, to do something beyond what you intend them to do. And so we want to make sure that nobody who's not supposed to, you know, gets into the, uh, the trusted zone in the enterprise. Um, and internal APIs need security too. Um, whether it's a rogue employee that is, you know, 
doing something intentionally bad or or somebody has social engineering. Um, I recently got an email from from uh, something that said I've won some kind of an award from IBM um, that didn't come from IBM, right? So there was somebody trying to to get me to click on something to give them information and and get them into um, into our systems, right? So so even if people make mistakes, there's a possibility for um, for things to happen. Uh, and so use APIs as a control point for internal. Uh, APIs as well as external APIs. Uh, more in in this area of exposure, scope, and positioning. Um, you know, not every interface needs to be managed, and, and this is a, a lengthier topic that I'm going to have time to get into uh, right now. But um, inter application uh, between applications, you know, things coming from the outside in, or between the applications inside your environment. Um, these are the application interfaces that we want to manage. Sometimes, especially nowadays, where people are moving applications from one location to another on cloud, on premise, wherever it may be, um, as you move between applications, we want to validate the security on, on those, those calls. But when we're inside the application, and especially when we think about microservice applications, which may have many, many, many parts, we don't want to introduce the, the latency and, and, and we don't need to, uh, to introduce the, the security aspects between modules in, in the same application, right? So, so, um, so this is referred to as north-south versus east-west, um, and you'll see a lot of write-ups on this, including in, in my paper. Um, know the expected request and response, right? So we expect a certain request in, and we expect to, you know, we expect to give a certain response out um, and, and make sure that the things that are coming in meet those um, you know, those expectations, right? So we don't want to allow for injection of additional data. Uh, this is an important one, again, that I see a lot of people make mistakes uh, on. When, when we build APIs often based on the systems that people are trying to access, we are exposing the structure of those programs that people are trying to access, and that's not a good thing, right? So now that people know that the database has all this information in it, um, you know, they, they may see columns or, or information that they're not supposed to see. Or even if they are allowed to see those things, um, they may start to try to use them in ways that um, that they're not intended to use, right? So so we want to abstract away from the, the structure of the backend systems, the, back, the databases, things like that, and make consumer-oriented APIs, things that uh, consumers asking for this information, I give them that information. It doesn't relate in any way to something that will let them know that this is the way we've structured the data inside our enterprise, right? So, so another very important thing that we want to think about as we're building our APIs uh, for security. Um, you can also take advantage to meet additional security concerns. Some of the things that I've written about in the past deal with things like GDPR and you know, obviously um, um, other other kinds of things like uh, PSD2 that come out um, in Europe. Uh, there are many, um, whether they're self-imposed or government-imposed regulations for, for different purposes that APIs can also apply to, and, and certainly using them for, for these things as well makes a lot of sense. Um, whenever possible, uh, we should automate the security policies, uh, so don't rely on an API developer to know what things they should do from a security perspective, make it automatic, make it part of either the infrastructure that you uh, put in place or the development process for the APIs that automatically adds the logging and the monitoring and the security aspects that you need to have added to the API without the API developer having to make a specific action to, to make that happen. Retire old versions of APIs, right? So we have an old version, and once we get that last user off of it, get rid of it. Uh, don't leave it around. Um, you know, it just becomes another entry point into the enterprise that um, that we have to be uh, aware of and, and make sure that we continue to secure. So, so versioning is a, a big challenge that we've spoken about many times, um, and, and you know, trying to keep the number of versions down is is a benefit. And then the last thing um, in this section is to automate security testing and, and monitoring. Um, so you, you want to um, you know, run through these tests frequently. You know, we don't want to just test once while we're in the development cycle and then you know put it into production and we never test again. 
Um, things may change, and it may not even be in your API, but there could be a change on the back end. Uh, it, it could be um, you know, some other thing that happens in, in another part of the security uh, infrastructure that all of a sudden causes a hole to open that wasn't there before. And so run automated test scripts frequently and make sure that there are no holes that have opened and monitor the environment to be sure that uh, things are continuing to get back the responses that you expected and the, uh, the performance uh, and, and so on. <clears throat> okay, we're 25 into this, I'm doing well on time. Uh, the last section is gateways. Um, so most uh, implementations of API security deal with gateways um, and just a couple of um, uh, principles around gateways themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so gateways should not contain general purpose runtime. I don't want to have this be a place where where business logic could even run. Um, you know that certainly helps with some of the earlier ones. If I don't have the ability to run uh, a general purpose business application there, then it becomes less likely that I will do so. Um, but also it becomes a way of stopping a bad actor who's gotten into the gateway for security purposes to then introduce code that might um, take advantage of that general purpose runtime and do something entirely different that you weren't expecting. Um, you should have gateways near the back ends um, that you're trying to access. Uh, so this uh, you know, certainly helps from a performance perspective. It would make uh, you know, bad performance to you know, go to cloud one, uh, have to come on premise, uh, um, or a gateway check to then go to cloud two, uh, you know. So, 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 you know, these kinds of things don't make sense from performance. But it also is a challenge from a security perspective. We we don't want to secure the traffic in the gateway, and then pass through the network to get to the place that uh, we're trying to go. Um, so, if you have you know content on Amazon, Google, IBM, Azure, whatever cloud you have, or on premise, you know, put a gateway on those places. And, and and then use that north south checking that we were talking about earlier to uh, to secure the traffic as it comes into that location and, and validate that uh, that traffic is authorized to do what they're trying to do. Um, you should have both internal and external gateways, right? So a separate internal gateway in the trusted zone for internal traffic scenarios. You don't want to have the traffic that's inside the enterprise uh, go out to a gateway in the DMZ and then come back in again, that, that can be a security exposure. And, and as I mentioned earlier, you also don't want to have the traffic from outside uh, come through the DMZ and not be totally secured and hit an internal gateway. So you really need to have internal and external gateways. Some people will use a micro gateway inside, that's fine. Um, you know, you, you choose what level of uh, uh, you know, support of security that you want. Uh, inside the enterprise, but in in my mind, internal is is as dangerous as external. So be careful. Um, use the API gateway to handle common security threats, denial of service, you know, input validation, injection. These are things that the um, API gateway can do and, and and should be done at the gateway level. And then monitor and analyze API traffic. So if there is, um, you know bad things happening at the gateway. Uh, we're seeing you know, too many attempts to do something uh, that people are not allowed to do. Um, if they're trying to access multiple different accounts, you know, uh, you know, that, that could be a, a thing that people are trying to, to find an account that they can get into, um, you know, recognize these things and raise an alert. And then use the analytic data and the logging as well from the gateway uh, to understand what's, what's happened on the gateway. So, quick run through. Uh, I did in record time uh, 30 uh, security principles in, in probably about 20 minutes. Um, and here's the list of all of them, right? So, um, so these are all 30 in the different categories that I spoke about. The URL uh, is listed at the top of this page. I'll, I'll give you a second on this page to write that down if you want it. The, the, um, the uh, content of this is going to be made available through API Days, and you can download this presentation at that time. Uh, this paper is also listed at the uh, the back end in my um, list of all my present uh, all my uh, publications. Um, so uh, so what should you do with this, right? So I've get, got thirty principles here. Maybe you like some of them, maybe you don't. Um, you know, establish your list of security principles. You know, 
I, I, these were my opinions, and, and obviously I reviewed this with a few better security experts than myself uh, in IBM to you know decide you know if this is what you think are the right security principles for for you. And you may say some of these are less important to me. I don't want them. I'm not sure which ones those might be. But maybe you have other ones that you've thought of that that go beyond what I've thought of, and that's great. I'd love to hear what those are, and maybe I'll create a an addendum to this paper with you know five or ten or twenty more, um, depending on how what I hear. Once you've got the list of security principles, and hopefully you see that the level that I was writing these at are fairly understandable by a non security expert, non technical expert, you know that will understand what we're trying to accomplish in the area of security, then you dive into how do you implement each of these principles, right? And that may change over time as new and better techniques come out and as the bad guys start to do something that works on one of the old techniques. And then verify that all of the principles that you've got in your list are, are covered, you know? So, so you know, if we did something at the edge of, of, of um, the security spectrum where we're just validating traffic on the way in, um, is, is, you know, is that enough or did I, do I need to do more, right? So, um, and, and then the additional um, actions at the bottom here uh, are some of the things that, that we think you, you might want to also take advantage of. Uh, setting up alerts, I think I've covered already. We, we're working with partners uh, and, and in IBM to, to start to use AI uh, more to see if we can spot abnormal or out of bounds situations. We do recommend that you have security champions inside uh, to, to just keep on top of this stuff and, and move things forward. And then model threats, um, you know, ensure that uh, security is part of your governance and compliance. And, and, and you know, one of the things I wrote in the paper is the easiest way to secure something is to, to uh, you know, just shut off entire access to it to everybody, right? And that, that's not something that, that's likely to work for your business. And, and so, um, you have to get to yes, right? You have to get to the point where we can access these things in the appropriate way by the appropriate people in the appropriate amounts. And so, so that that's really my recommendations. Um, and hopefully, you'll download the paper, be able to uh, consume this in a in a more timely uh, manner than than my breeze through here at, at this high level. And and uh, I'm like to to connect with you and, and hear more about that from you. Um, as I mentioned, I, I do a lot of writing. So at the back of the um, presentation, when you get it, will be everything that I've written about. You know, for the last um, several years. Um, actually, this first URL is gone now. It's only the second one. I have to remove that from this. Um, the community is the new place that we're storing all of the content. Um, as well as on uh, places like the API scene from API days, some of these link out to there. Some of these are in magazines and things like that. So API economy, digital transformation, business and value, strategy, governance, and best practices uh, category. This paper that we're talking about today is right down here at the bottom, principles for API security. So um, so that's, uh, that's the paper. And then we have industry-related content. OK, John, I am done. Thanks. Thanks very much, Alan. I had um, I have a question for you because you talk to a lot of um, business executives about a range of, uh, of technology topics when it comes to security in general, but a API security in particular. How do they normally react to that to that topic? Is it something that I just um, say you, you're the technical people? Can you just deal with it for me, or do they see that it's that it has more strategic implications for them? I, I think that obviously that varies from person to person, right? There'll be some that, that don't want to deal with it, and you know it's the security person's responsibility. But there are many that that you know have a fear of opening the, the up their assets to the outside world. Um, this is something that I've experienced now in, in APIs. It's something I experienced. In, you know, I'm an old guy, right? So in the old days of the web, you know, when when I would go talk to people about putting things online for the web, and and they go. Oh no, we can't expose things on the web, right? We'll, you know, we'll put a, a text website up there and tell them to call us or come into our store. You know, you have you have to get them past. That's the getting to yes message that I said at the very end, there, right? You have to get them past this fear of 
um, exposing this data because this is the new channel to market and you want to be a part of it. And, 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 and so that's the conversation that I have with the business people that says, you know, the turning, saying no is not, is not the right answer. We, we, we certainly saw from earlier presentations about how many companies are, are consuming APIs, how many are publishing and, and realizing that uh, to, to extend their reach and range beyond their, their own distribution channels, they really need to be uh, opening up more to, to partners. So uh, doing that is not really like there's a choice anymore. That's right. It's like, do you have a choice to have a website, right? Of course you have to have a website, right? You know, it's, of course I have to have APIs. Of course I need to have an ecosystem, right? So we're getting, we're moving this forward, right? The, 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 the control, the type control that used to be, you know, it, it, it's expanding out uh, over time and, and who knows what the next thing is going to be beside after APIs, but uh, hopefully we'll all uh, have fun going to those events after, after uh, we get to come, come back in person again. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Alan, for for sharing uh, the, the those uh, those principles. That I think there is there's a lot there that uh, that we can work with. Thanks.